A number of years ago, I met this guy who I was super into. I just thought he was so fun and playful and just kind of a free spirit. And I'm like very much into the free spirits. We got to know each other. We started dating and the first few months were amazing. It was so good. We had a great time. We were like really connected. We were in it. But slowly but surely after those first few months, I kind of started sensing that like he was a little less available, like that there was something little kind of like removed. And whether that was real or perceived, I have some of my own history of abandonment stuff. Like I come from a divorced family, so I've got like that kind of baggage that I carry with me. And when that was happening, or at least when I was feeling like that was happening, it wasn't just like some concern I was having. I could tell my shit was getting stirred up. I was getting triggered. And instead of actually having language for that and knowing how to kind of talk about it and bring it to the table, I immediately went into defense mode. Well, I was fine, you pulled away. And so I kind of start pointing the finger. I'm like, let's talk about this. Need to psychoanalyze it, right? Dating a therapist is so cool. All that did was actually push him away a little bit more. And then he's blaming me that I'm being too much and now he's pulling away. And the cycle continues, we continue to perpetuate and we're arguing with each other. We're kind of falling into these stupid little fights here and there. And eventually it got to a point when he just pulled the plug and said, this isn't for me, I'm out. And then that was kind of it. And the irony of it all was the very thing that I was afraid that was gonna happen inevitably wound up happening anyway. And I kind of can't blame him because it really did get to a point where it wasn't good. Like we weren't being kind to each other. And we also weren't finding productive ways of kind of navigating this stuff. We were getting caught up in a toxic loop. And that is how a toxic relationship can happen. To clarify, an abusive relationship is kind of like when you feel really unsafe for a variety of reasons. That's just gonna be a totally different video. But here, in talking about a toxic relationship, that's when like one or both partners of a relationship are kind of like not getting their essential needs met and kind of like have this tendency to put it on the other person, kind of blame them one way or another, and then act out defensively in the hopes that we can kind of get them to change. And like conflict in a relationship is healthy. That's like normal and supposed to happen in a functioning relationship. But when we attempt to try and resolve that with kind of like blame and defensiveness, that's when it starts turning toxic. What can be problematic about this, especially in our relationship when we're just passing off blame onto somebody else, is that it's not giving us a chance to take a look at kind of our own stuff, to understand and normalize our own insecurities and our own shit. And when we're not doing that, then we actually reinforce the belief that it's not just kind of messiness, but it's actually what makes us unlovable. That's what feeds shame. And it does a great job then of just kind of staying guarded and protecting ourselves, but it does not do a great job. It is a very ineffective strategy for us to inevitably get back to a place where we all kind of want to be anyway, which is just to feel that love again and to feel connected to our partners. And especially for us gays, I mean, we've been kind of like through a long history of being traumatized just from having to hide who we were for so long that because of that, we then have a hypersensitivity to any perceived criticism or potential rejection. And then that just makes us that much more easily triggered and defensive. And especially in the context of these more intimate relationships, there are opportunities for us to heal from, you know, kind of the bullshit oppression that we've kind of all collectively experienced. So it makes it that much more important that we can find a way to connect. So what can we do? The first thing is, you gotta know your brand of shit. We have to give it context. So anytime that you're feeling maybe like neglected or criticized, what feels familiar about that? Like what's really the history that you're bringing to the table for that? We need to know what that is. And also then, what do you tend to do? Like how do you act out? Do you push away? Do you chase? Again, we have to kind of know the context for what is getting triggered for you. Next, we have to know what we need. Right? So like when we are getting triggered, like what works for us? You know, is it that we just kind of need to be held or we need to be verbally reassured or maybe we need space. We can't have it be a guessing game for our partner. We need to know ourselves what that is. And so after that, then we actually have to be vulnerable enough and courageous enough to be able to share with our partner kind of when we get triggered and maybe why we get triggered and what actually can work for us too. We have to let them know, we give them the roadmap. Beyond that too, we also need to really make sure that we're checking in and picking our battles. We can't go toe to toe on every single little thing that kind of feels off or makes us feel uncomfortable. 
we have to make sure that it's really a moment that's kind of worth the conversation. Something that is actually like a need that's really going unmet and something that feels kind of triggering for us so that we then can get the support that we need. After we've done all of those things, then we just need to pay attention. Because if we've done all of that and then our partner can't or won't actually help to support us, especially in those moments where we're feeling really insecure, then it's probably a good time for us to gauge compatibility and maybe make a decision that this might not be the right fit anymore and then we can detach with love. But there's also the possibility that after we do all that we have a new way of expressing some of the needs that we have that our partner can, will, and wants to actually show up and be supportive so that we can level up from toxicity back to a place of love.